So I wanted to talk about this pyramid that someone in my Discord actually made. And he, he, he wanted me to look at it and he said, you can critique it. This is someone in my Discord that I trust. I feel like they have a lot of knowledge. And I'm, so I'm kind of curious what his pyramid looks like. This is the pyramid right here. So first it says, eating for weight loss and health, what to prioritize. With all the overwhelming information out there about nutrition, it can be overwhelming to discern what elements to prioritize and when. Here are some basic concepts that are more that are important to consider as you plan for your goals whether it, it be weight loss building a better relationship with food and overall health and it says there is no single absolute way to go about nutrition while these concepts are depicted as levels it is natural to ebb and flow through them at different points in your long-term health journey however it will be most helpful to consider starting from the bottom and working up when starting out. So as we know with pyramids, right, the bottom thing is that usually the most important or the most basic, and then it's about moving forward. Oh, we got a new, uh, we got a new sh shirt order. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you to Laura. Thanks, Laura. I appreciate it. So let's go over this. So at the very bottom, so most important according to this pyramid is quality, steady and not in a gradual shift to eating whole foods Try recipes, discover new preferences, learn meal prepping and planning. I would agree with this. And I like that it says steady and gradual shift. That's important. That's very important because a lot of people, as I've said before, like to go from zero to 100, right? So it's like I'm eating the typical Western diet. I'm eating everything. I'm eating whatever I want. I'm going to McDonald's all the time, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, OK, now I'm going to eat chicken and rice and keep it 100 percent clean. And I'm only going to cook my meals. That is such a huge shift in what you are used to doing that it is it is almost always too much for someone right and so i really like that this says steady and gradual shift to eating whole foods okay so next one habits explore triggers foods situations emotions that lead to binging or cheating practice forgiveness and minimize guilt for slip-ups very important explore alternative activities to distress or celebrate other than food man this is so far, this has been on the money. I'm honestly not 100% sure if I fully 1000% agree with this. I might put this at the bottom, to be honest, but I don't know. They're, I mean, they're very close to each other, right? And they're, I think that everyone is gonna be a little bit, a little bit different. I think from my own personal experience, the habits might be the, might be at the bottom, but even then, even saying that, the quality and the gradual shift is what I did. And so I know that that worked for me, but again, I agree with that, especially saying where it says here, uh, minimize guilt for slip ups, practice forgiveness. That is so, oh my gosh, that is one of, and I know me and me and uh, Armarsh, the guy who made this, we have actually talked about this is like a lot of people, when you have a slip up or you, you, you fall off, people think that it's, they treat it as it's the end of the world. And now there's nothing I can do about it. And this is it, right? When in reality, it literally is just a slip up and you can 1000% hop right back on the wagon and get it moving. Like you, you're not, it's not game over there. And being able to practice forgiveness and be able to be like, okay, you know what? I made a mistake. I made a mistake. That sucks. Let's keep moving forward. Instead of what a lot of people do, it'll be Friday. They made the mistake, but then they're like, ah, you know what? I already messed up. Might as well just Saturday and Sunday go for it and I'll start again on Monday. If you do that, you're going to see a huge, huge uh, reduction in your progress. 100%. Cloudy Tears, you should do a PowerPoint for your next stream. Oh, man. That'll, that'll remind me of high school. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> All right. So up next, calories. Begin tracking calories if weight loss uh, hits a plateau. Calculate TDEE and adjust from there. Find a deficit that is sustainable and realistic. I like that this isn't the, the top or the most important one or at the very bottom or like the basis because I think at the start, it's not necessary to track your calories, right? If you are someone that is trying to lose like a significant amount of weight, the uh, habits, as I was saying before, right? So this is the second to bottom. The habits are the things that you will probably be able to change without tracking anything and you'll see results, right? So when I talk about habits, uh, thank you so much, Veronica, for joining. I appreciate it. Um, but when we talk about habits, for me, when I think about that, it was drinking a two liter of soda a day. It was eating fast food almost every single day and eating junk food almost every single day, right? Those habits, when I changed those habits, 
I lost weight. I didn't start counting calories until I lost a significant amount of weight. Because for me, numbers and stuff, because I was in like, this is a little, uh, getting a little bit, uh, you know, personal, but like I was in special ed when I was in high school and math for me was my absolute worst subject. It still is very hard for me and I'm very bad at it. So the thought of actually tracking my calories and like trying to focus on those numbers was incredibly scary to me. And I was like, man, it's already hard enough to try and change these habits. It's already hard enough to try and lose weight. So adding in tracking calories for me at the start was too much. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with tracking calories. I think that it is a, a, an important skill to learn, even macros, right? It's not necessary at the very beginning. Moving on, next one. So next one is calorie, or no, next one is macros. Well, before we move on, I would just wanna say that I'm very happy sustainable is in this um, pyramid because you guys know that is my favorite word. Uh, okay, uh, next, macros. Tailor macros to fit your fitness goals explore different ratios for satiety and enjoyment now i think what the most important thing about this one is explore different ratios um a lot of people feel like they when they try something they, they're locked into that in reality right if you could try something you'd be like man i i thought that eating 40 percent fat would be helpful but like i don't like it i don't feel good eating that it's really hard for me to hit those numbers so then you can be like okay i'm gonna pivot and eat 20 percent or eat whatever, right? I think that that's really good. Now, I will say, so uh, I guess a small critique would be that I honestly believe that for a, a big majority of people, actually tracking every single macro isn't necessary. The only reason I say it like that is because I do believe that learning how to track macros is an incredible tool. So I think that it's important to learn how to track them and maybe do it for a while, but don't feel like it's a, a thing you need to do. I think more importantly, tracking your calories is something that is gonna give you a lot of results, it's gonna be super helpful, and it's a lot less stressful than counting your macros. Now again, there's nothing wrong with counting your macros, and if it's something that you wanna do, you like the numbers, you like kind of focusing on that stuff, then absolutely do it. Like, I'm not saying don't do it, but don't feel like you have to. That's all I'm trying to say there. But again, explore different ratios for satiety and enjoyment. That's in incredibly important, especially the, the very last word, enjoyment. Because if you're eating a diet, and I'm sure that, that uh, R. Marsh, the guy that made this would agree, if you're eating a diet that is not enjoyable, that you cannot wait to get off of, you're in it for the wrong reasons, and that's not gonna work. Like, it's just not going to work. Like, if you are eating a diet and you're like, man, I can't wait to lose this weight and stop doing this, that is not a good place to be. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to be in that position. And so if you find something that you actually enjoy and you find something that you feel like is sustainable um, and that you can have satiety and enjoyment, you're on the right track, man. Okay, next one, timing, meal times to fuel and recover training, uh, coordinate snacks and meals around training to maximize performance. So what I would say here is that timing is, I would honestly, I don't know, this is hard. Uh, I honestly feel like I would put timing at the top, like the the very pinnacle, like the thing that is, um, it's I don't think it's super necessary. The only reason I say that is because so many people will get caught up on meal timing. They haven't even mastered any of these things yet. And honestly, I feel like mastering intuitive eating before timing would be more helpful for someone that is, you know, really, really struggling with, has really struggled with food in the past. That's my opinion. I just see so many people that get so focused on time. Like, oh, I have to eat, I have to eat uh, 50 grams of protein five minutes after I work out or else I'm gonna lose all my muscle mass. It's like, dude, you don't need to stress about that. You are focusing on the minutia, right? Before you're focusing on the, the bigger picture. And then the last one, intuitive eating. So natural attunement with all levels, tracking is minimized or eliminated, occasional re revisit of each level as needed. And I like that. I like that that is in there because I think that tracking is an incredibly helpful tool and it can be super, super useful. But again, like I said, in reality, it is not realistic to expect yourself to track for the rest of your life. 
right? And so you should get to a point where you are intuitively eating. What I call what I do, I don't like to call it intuitive eating because that's almost like a dirty word now that people have thrown around. Um, I call it mindful eating is kind of what I do. Right, so I am mindful of the choices I'm making, and I'm mindful of the you know the calorie the around the amount of calories that might be in X Y Z food. I am mindful of the macros. I'm mindful of how I'm gonna feel. I'm mindful of what it's going to do to me performance wise, but it's not just intuitive, right? I'm thinking about it. This is really really good. Now, obviously, I have had my like little mini critiques of it. But if someone followed this template right here and like really took this to heart, I truly believe that you would see results. And I truly believe that this finding out how to understand this and really implementing it into your life, right? I think that it absolutely can help you find a sustainable way of eating that can sustain your fitness, can sustain your weight loss if that's something that you want to do, that isn't overly restrictive that doesn't make you feel like you are, you know, constantly battling yourself. And I think that this is unbelievable. Like, I think I really do believe that this could be very, very helpful. So I appreciate our Marsh in the discord for making this and bringing it to my attention. I think that this is awesome. Really, really like this. Obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.